So hey guys, I'm Missy Billingsley, and tonight I'm going to show you how to scan in your artwork using the Baylock Destiny to create a fun embroidered design. Now, this design was actually downloaded. I went to Google, did a search for coloring book images. It took me to Pinterest, of course, where there's a million and one pictures to choose from, and I picked this one out. So it just turns, turns out it's a cute design. It'll be great for filling in areas. It'll be great for um, stitching around, and so... I think you're going to have a lot of fun with it. So I've placed it on my paper scanning frame and I've used all of my magnets. You can use as many or as few as you need. And so I've just gone ahead and used them all and just placed it strategically around. I don't want to place it on top of my design because then I would have to go in and clean it up. So I'm going to place it as far away from the design as I can to make sure that it's holding my paper down nice and flat, but it's not covering up my design. Also, there's a black and white line up here at the top of the frame. You never want to cover that up because when the machine initially starts scanning, it has um, it stops in these two areas to kind of recognize the colors to see what your um, what colors it's going to be looking for. Okay, so we're going to turn around to the machine and we're going to scan this in. Okay, so I've placed my frame on. Um, the machine, the bed of the, the Baylock Destiny, I've locked down the, the arm over here to be sure and lock it in place. And now I'm actually ready to scan. So I'm going to slide over here to the screen. And we're going to go ahead and see about scanning and playing with it. Okay, so let's choose IQ Designer. Now IQ Designer is where you're going to be doing all of your scanning of your images whether you want to scan a piece of fabric that's in the embroidery hoop or you want to scan to create um, a design with artwork like we're going to be doing tonight. So you have a couple of options. You have your create line image and create fill image. Both of these are what you would use to scan your artwork. There's another icon over here to the left that's two flowers with a blue arrow. That is used if you're scanning your frame, your embroidery frame, not your paper scanning frame. So this one you'll use if you're scanning your embroidery frame with fabric in it. Maybe you want to fussy place a design or you want to work on top of a maybe a quilt block in the hoop. You would use this icon here to actually scan it. So we're actually going to choose create line image and select scan. Now here's what's going to happen. It's going to say the built-in the frame will move to be scanned with the built-in camera and you'll touch OK. Now by default, this is going to scan with a satin stitch. You can either change it before you're scanning your image or you can change it afterwards. And when it finishes scanning, I'll show you how in both places you can change it. So it's simply scanning the artwork that's in the paper scanning frame. And I just printed it off with my regular printer, not a fancy printer, but it is a black and white image, so it'll, it should, should scan very well. Okay, so as it's moving, it's scanning down the frame, and then it moves back to the top. So it scans down, and then moves back to the top. And then when it finishes, it's going to go back to the center. So it's finished the design, finished scanning. And right here at the very bottom, you'll notice where it says line, and it shows me the line is a zigzag. If I had wanted to change that, I would have changed it before, or if you forget, it's okay. You can always change it afterwards. Okay, so now that I'm going to use the arrows in the top left and bottom right hand corners, and I'm going to bring them in to crop out those magnets. And the cool thing about this, if, if I wanted to cut off that bottom part of the design, I could actually bring it in to where I needed it to go and just cut it off. I'm actually going to leave it. Okay, so I'm going to come up to about a quarter of an inch, eighth of an inch away from my design area. I'm going to do the same thing at the top. And I am using my stylus. I'm trying to get used to using my stylus because it does make it a little bit easier. Okay, now just to show you how you can very easily get rid of that, I'm going to leave in just a little bit of the magnet. Okay, so then we're going to touch OK in the bottom right-hand corner. 
and here's my image and that actually looks really good so I can see my magnet over here on the left hand side so I'm going to be able to erase that in a minute now at the bottom of the screen here you have a grayscale detection you can move it to the left or the right and retry your image so if we retry this you'll see that it maybe picks up a little bit more of the detail maybe I don't want more detail like that's picking up the different shades of the magnet and I really don't want that so less is going to give you more and then we're going to move to the all the way to the right hand side and select retry and that looks pretty good I mean it's taken away all the little gray scale here of the magnet and it, the lines look really good too so we're going to select set and on this screen this is where it kind of confuses people because what happens is it gets very confusing because like I have my background grid on but I also have the background image of my scan on so if I were to this icon right here on the lower left hand side if I were to take it all the way to the left you would see how it makes a very dark image of my design that I've scanned but if I take it all the way to the right it's going to take away the image altogether okay so there's no image in my background now it does have the grid on and the grid can be sometimes confusing so I'm going to go up here to the top to the settings icon which is the second one over looks like a sheet of paper and I'm going to choose to turn off my grid so I have no grid in the background now and select OK so now that's a nice pretty clean page and I just have my artwork on the page so over here on the right hand side up at the very top you have your preview window and the preview window is going to show you just that a preview of what your design is going to look like the next little set of icons down that is your line drawing tools and that's what you would use to draw lines to change the different line types to um, change colors so if I were to select this icon right here it looks like a little bitty sheet of paper like a postcard it's going to open up and give you all of your different line properties the pencils you can use to draw in the different line types you have your satin your running stitch your triple candle wick and um, chain stitch and then you have the no sew line and of course you have your colors at the bottom we're going to leave it as is because there's a lot of different lines in here that we don't want to um, take a chance and change a few of them and not all of them okay. so the next one down is going to be our fill tools and this is what would fill in our design area again settings allows you to choose your different fill types you have your stipple and then with your um, destiny you have original patterns um, 10 original patterns for the fills then you have more additional patterns if you've purchased the upgrades okay so you also have your changing of your colors as well so now on these both of these icons both the line drawing tools and your fill stitch tools you have a pencil you have a paint brush what do pencils do they draw a line what do paint brushes do they draw a line you have a bucket next to the pencil and you have a bucket next to the paintbrush what do buckets do when you drop when you pour them out they fill in areas so just know you have to choose whichever one you're working with you have to choose the corresponding one to fill in an area because if I were to take this paintbrush right now and touch on the screen or draw on the screen you'll see how it makes marks but if I were to take the paint bucket and fill it in it's going to fill in the entire screen so we're going to simply select undo and get rid of all that so that's your, the difference between your brushes your pencils and your buckets in the corresponding places now then below that we have our eraser we have our shapes tool when you select the shapes you get 30 different shapes on the first page these are all closed shapes the next icon you have 30 more shapes then you have 30 open shapes these are line tools then you have your outline of your embroidery pattern that you may just you may save an embroidery and bring into IQ to add stitches around and then you have your hoop selection so you can change whatever hoop size you want to work in and have that be the view that you're looking at 
So now I'm going to choose the eraser. And with the eraser, when you select it, you have three squares and three circles that pop up. Now the squares are, are best if you're zoomed in really big and you're going to erase a straight line like this um, straight line of the magnet right here. But circles, you, they give you kind of a rounded edge as you're going into your to erase your design. So I'm actually going to choose the squares for right this minute. I'm, I usually work with the medium size, but I'm going to choose the large because I really want to get rid of this line right here. So I'm just going to simply draw it down and erase. Okay, so maybe I wanted to get rid of some of these leaves in here. You can work with it at this size for only so long. Then up here in the top left corner, you're going to want to make it larger. So you can actually zoom it up to 800%. That's 400. That's really big. 800 is even bigger. Now when I get it this large, it's kind of hard to see around the design area. So if you'll look over on the top right hand corner, this is where you have your preview window. So you're going to be able to use the preview window to kind of pan around to different parts of the design and see if there's anything you want to erase anything you need to clean up. Maybe you need to add a little pencil mark right here. Okay, so I'm going to grab a pencil and I'm going to draw in that line. Okay, as easy as that, drawing in that shape. And see here's another one right here. Now these are very small little places that I'm adding in. They may or may not make a difference in my final stitch out. Because remember, I'm zoomed in at 800%. So it's probably not going to make that big of a difference. So even if you come back down, now you're not going to see it. So I could very easily undo and get rid of those little spots where I had it. I do think that one needs to be connected, though. So we're going to zoom it back in. Come back down. And add that one back. Now when you're drawing, I'm resting my hand on the side of the machine, whether you use your pinky to rest or the palm on the side, you don't want to touch the screen because if you touch the screen, what's going to do is it's going to leave a mark. Okay, so you don't want to, tr you want to try not to touch the screen. Just rest your hand on the side somewhere so you can actually get in here and draw your lines. Okay. So we're just going to zoom around. And once you've done all your cleanup, that you need to, then you want to be sure and save it. Because if you don't save it as you're going, invariably something is going to happen and you're going to have, you're going to wish you had saved it. Okay, so now we drew in a line with our pencil. Now let's check out this eraser. Maybe I want to get rid of some of these leaves. So choose your eraser. I'm going to choose the circle. Now keep in mind, I'm zoomed in 400%. The erasers are much larger in life than they look on the screen. So when you touch on the screen, you'll actually see an image of the eraser and the shape. So you'll know where to erase. Now here's what you want to pay attention to. If you're erasing a lot, maybe I'm going to erase several of these leaves, and I'm leaving my pencil down, and I'm erasing, I'm erasing, I'm like, oh, ooh, I didn't mean to erase that leaf but I had my pencil down for quite a while so when I select undo it's going to bring back all of those leaves that I really wanted gone okay so maybe after you erase one of the leaves or part of the design raise your pencil up so you don't have to hit undo and bring back a whole bunch of stuff that you may or may not want so I am going to select undo to leave them there because I actually think they look pretty good and the design itself looks really good it scanned really well and for the artwork, it's not, it's not perfect artwork by any means, but it's, it looks, looks really good. There are a few little breaks here, which is probably from my printer, so that's why those broke apart. But those really aren't a problem that I can, I would have to print it again or just fix it like I just did on the screen. Okay. So now, once you have the design here, you're going to want to go ahead and save it. So at the bottom of the screen, touch the red arrow going into the pocket and save it either to your machine, your USBs, 
or your, your SD card or direct to your computer. I'm gonna save to my machine because I don't have USB in, okay? So that is actually ready to be taken into embroidery. So let's go ahead and send it to embroidery and then we'll come back to it and we'll add some colors and change some line colors and so forth. So let's go ahead and touch next. I haven't changed any of the properties and I'm gonna show you why in just a second. So now when I choose next, it's gonna bring up all, all of these lines that you see dark are connected. So they're gonna stitch in one connected outline stitch. But right now they're gonna stitch as a satin stitch, which I really don't want a satin stitch. That would be density for days. So I'm gonna select the satin stitch. But what happens is if I only select the satin stitch, you can see there's parts of the design over here that are not connected, okay? So I need to make sure everything is connected before I start changing it. So that's what this chain link is for. So I'm gonna choose the chain link, and now everything on the screen that is that same property is gonna to turn to it looks like a little bitty wiggling line. Now I can choose the satin stitch, change it to a triple stitch, and I do like to change my color, just so it kind of reaffirms to me that it did change my colors touch OK and now everything has turned pink and everything is a running stitch okay so now I can save that again because now it's the right properties that I'm wanting for my particular design all right so then we'll go ahead and touch preview uh, your stitch length I'll usually bump that up that's a 2.0 is a pretty short length so I'll usually bump it up to about a 2.5 2. you know 3.0 somewhere in there even I'm just right in the middle at 2.8 here so then we'll touch set, select preview, and it's thinking about how it's gonna turn this into an embroidery design. And looky there, touch set, okay. And there's your embroidery design ready to be stitched out. So that quickly and easily, you can turn it from a scanned artwork into an embroidery design. Okay, so now we've, our scanning frame is on the machine. We've already scanned our artwork in for the first design. Now we're gonna actually move back to the machine. We're gonna go back into IQ Designer and we're gonna work on a second design. So we've already scanned it and we've already saved it. A question sometimes comes up, well, why did you save it to begin with? Because if I ever wanna work on it again, I can now use the blue arrow coming out of the pocket at the very bottom Go select the design, choose it, and bring it in. So now I don't have to rescan the entire design and I don't have to clean it up again because it's, I've already cleaned it up. I saved it after I did all the cleaning and all the fixing and fussing that I wanted to do. So now then, what if we wanted to add colors to this? Okay, so we're gonna leave it all the outline all one color and we're gonna add some fills to different parts of our flowers. So we're going to make it larger, and maybe you want the flower right here, maybe you want these inner petals to be a certain color. Okay. So I'm going to actually choose my fill pattern. I'm going to choose the settings, choose a yellow. I'm just going to leave these all as a regular fill pattern. And I'm going to choose, actually I'm going to come over here to this little daisy. Oops, see what I did? I did the paint brush, not the bucket. So I'm going to undo that, grab the bucket, Scooch it over just a little bit, and I'm gonna fill in each of these petals on this flower. Now, if by chance you hit outside the design area like I just did, what are you gonna do? Simply hit undo at the bottom of the screen. It is my favorite button on the screen, and it'll take away all of that that you did. Now, these little circles right here, they would be an awesome place for a little hotfix crystal. So I'm definitely not gonna fill them in. But I may come up here and fill this little flower in with a different color. I like to use a lot of colors, so I have the option to change to, let me pick a different pink that I know I haven't chosen. So I have the option to have as many colors as I need to. Okay, so that looks good. 
and you can fill in as much or as little of this design as you want. Maybe I want these long little guys to be like leaves. Let's choose a green. And there's another one over here. I've got lots of leaves I can fill in. Those look cute. And this is kind of like coloring in a coloring book. You can stay here and play for hours. Hours, I'm telling you. So I'm simply changing my colors. And I am filling in the areas that I want to fill with stitches. All right, so let's try this big guy. Let's grab a purple. And it's just really a matter of playing. Okay, so that whole thing filled in because there's a hole right there. So let me zoom in so you can see where that hole is. Okay, see that hole right there? That whole thing filled, filled in that petal because there was that break. All right, so now let's undo that. And we can grab our pencil. And I'm going to try and grab the same color maybe. And the same type of stitch. And I'm going to grab my pencil and color that in. That's not the same color, but hopefully I'll be able to get it the right color on the next page. Okay, so now I filled that in. Now I'm going to try and fill that area. So see it filled just the outside area now, which is what I wanted to fill in. So if I keep moving down to this one, whoops, see what happened? It filled in all of this down here because there's a break in the line. And that's actually, that break came to be from where my printer actually skipped a little bit of the line right through here. So if I wanted to, I could go back to the very original artwork and go ahead and clean that up. Or again, I can zoom in, hit undo, zoom in real big. I still have the pink color on my pencil. I'm going to oh, choose the pencil and fill it like that. So I just connected the lines. So now when I fill it in, it fills in just the outer perimeter of that flower. That one's good. That one looks good. That one. So you see, it's just a matter of, whoops, playing and making it do what you want it to do. Where'd it go? There it is. As I said, you can sit here and play for hours, days, especially if you like to color. If you like to weed vinyl, if you're playing with your Cameo, your Silver Cameo Cutter, yeah, you can spend lots of time doing this. But it is a lot of fun, too. All right, so I'm going to choose a darker color purple for the inside of my flower. Okay. So you can see how you can play with as little or as much as you want. Now then, as your applying these colors, the color order, the machine's going to decide it for you. So it really doesn't matter what color you try and design it in. The machine's going to do that thinking for you. Okay. So now the angles and such of the stitches, when you go to the settings page, that's where you're going to be able to change the angles. And here's the thing. All of these different fill patterns, you could change them individually or you can change them as a group. Okay, so I'm going to go, I've done a little bit of work to this. I'm going to go ahead and save it. Oh, I didn't mean to undo. Fill it back in. Oh, not that. There we go. Give me that one. That's the one I want to fill in. So again, save it because maybe I have to run cook dinner. I don't, but maybe I do. I'm going to go ahead and save it. That way I can come back to it and work on it again later. All right, so then we'll go ahead and choose next. And here's where you can set your angles of all your stitches. Over here on the right-hand side, you have your chain link because we have a lot of fill pattern stitches in here. So if we select the chain link, that's going to select all of the similar fill pattern types. 
and it's going to let you change all of your stitches at the same time. The direction is set for automatic. I'm going to leave it at automatic because I don't want to have to change each and every one of those, and it usually does pretty well. The density, play with that. That's this second icon here, that 100%. You can either go down a little bit to like 90% or you can go up to 110%. And sometimes a little bit more density i found on some of them is better. So do a test, always do a test before you put it on your actual project. The next one is the direction, or sorry, the pull compensation. Um, if it's narrow lines like this, you know, you have to, again, the pull compensation is something you're going to play with because as it lays down the stitches, it's going to kind of distort the fabric. It'll kind of push it and stretch it out or it might draw it in. So the pull comp is something to play with. And then the underlay stitching, the under sewing, that is the little road map that stitches underneath the fill patterns to help lay down your base layer of stitches. And so you can choose to turn it on or off depending on how big your design is. Then we have, if we go through the select, I'm going to try and find an outline. See, there's an outline right there. So it shows it as a pink, but it only shows the one. So I'm going to chain link it. And now I've selected all of the outlines. But remember, they were different colors because I didn't grab the right color pink. So I'm going to go back to my outline settings. I'm going to choose black. And black is also actually going to make all those colors on there pop out. So I'll change my stitch length. Again, I like about a 2.8, 2 somewhere in there, in between 2.5 and, and 3. And it's going to vary depending on the type of design you're using. But those, that's usually my go-to is between 2.5 and, and 3. Then we'll touch Set. Then touch Preview. Touch OK. And it's deciding on all of the stitches for the design. And when it finishes, look how awesome that looks. Okay, looks amazing. So we're going to go ahead and touch set. Okay. And now you've actually taken that from IQ Designer and you've now created an embroidery pattern with fill stitches. Again, you could fill in as much or as little of the outlines as you wanted to or the fill patterns. Or you could also, you know, take colored pencil, pencils, pens, markers, color in different areas. So it could be like a multimedia project. So now this is ready to be stitched out. Okay, so we've scanned our artwork. It's already on the frame. We're going to move back into the machine and go into IQ Designer one more time to bring in our design. So I'm going to choose the running, the outline, <laughs> the memory pocket at the bottom of the page. I'm getting tongue-tied now. And we're going to choose the memory pocket. We're going to choose the very, uh, the second design. And I'll go ahead and change the colors because it's already set to a running stitch. So now if I make it bigger, let me go ahead and go forward to the next page, chain link everything, then change the color. Because if you don't chain link everything, it doesn't change all the colors. And then if you've already changed it, then it, it doesn't collect everything. So now we should all be a running stitch. So now to change individual colors, you're going to zoom in real big. And this is where I do get probably bigger than I should, like at an 800% because I want to be able to see what I'm working on. So I'm going to change these little guys right here. I'm going to change their color. And what I showed you a while ago is one that can take a lot of time. This can take even more time. So I'm going to choose my eraser and choose the smallest eraser you can because you are zoomed in really, really big. So smallest eraser you can. And as you touch the screen, you're still going to be able to see the size of your eraser. So you're going to come in here and you're going to erase just part of the outline. Now you can come back and connect it later, but you need to erase just bits and parts of it. See, I got the wrong part. Okay, I'm going to grab a square so you can see the dif difference. Where'd that guy go? Oh, he's up here. Okay, so that's all broke apart from here. So I'm going to go choose my color. 
of my outline. I'm going to choose this mossy green and I want it to be a triple run. And I'm going to choose my paint bucket. Remember the bucket fills in lines of color, the pencil draws lines. So I'm going to change, the, oops, <laughs> select the bucket, touch the line. So now those outlines are green. These are still open, but I'm going to come back and fill them back in. So I'm going to zoom back in real big. And I'm going to zoom, come right down here to these outlines. So I'm going to go close, close, close with my pencil. to the outline okay. but you want to actually you want to try not to touch because if you touch when you go to change this outline here it may change everything so that one's close we're gonna leave it and see how it does so I'm gonna zoom over to let's see what we have here Okay, here's some more of those little green guys. I'm going to zoom in. Zoom in real close so you can see what part you're actually looking at. Right here, here, and up here. Okay, so again, get your eraser. Smallest is the one I have. Zoom in real big. Touch. And just erase little little tiny bits. <gasps> Whoops. And right up here, I think. Okay, so those are broke apart. Oop, I see it's connected right here. So what's gonna happen if I choose my paint bucket? Watch all this area right here see how it turned everything green because it's still connected right here at this petal so I'm going to touch undo not the clock undo zoom in real big grab my eraser I think that got it Nope, it didn't get it. I'm still connected somewhere. Do so you see what happens? Oh, I'm, this must be it right here. Oh, right up here. That's where I'm still connected. So undo again. And just, you know, you may have to undo several times until you figure out where you're actually connected. Eraser. Now I shouldn't be connected. There we go. Okay, now here's the thing. Once I have con broken these apart, they're not connected anymore. If I go to fill them with a pattern, then it's gonna fill everything because there's a broke line. Okay, so once you change the color, if you want to fill it in, what I would do is I would either fill everything in first on one design and then bring in a second with just the running stitch outline for the second part of the design. That way you don't have to worry about any of the lines being connected or disconnected. Because now if I wanted to fill that in with color, I would need to get my pencil, bring this back in up here, connect my line so it's a closed area. Okay, so now I can fill it in, or I should be able to. Oh, that's a running stitch though. I want the fill pattern, I want it to be the light green, paint bucket, fill in the areas. Okay, so once you've broken it, you can change the lines, but then you have to reconnect it, because if you don't, like this one up here, it's, um, I, I did reconnect it. Oh no, I didn't see that one, I didn't reconnect. So it filled in the whole page, undo. So that one I did, but this one right down here, that one little bitty spot, right here. So I'm going to grab my pencil in the same color, and I'm going to fill in 
just that one little bitty spot. And that's all it takes is one little bitty pixel that will give you grief from filling in a design area. So I'm going to choose my paint bucket, fill it in. Okay, so you would do that, breaking apart the lines, changing their colors, bringing them back in on the entire thing. Now, here's what's going to happen. Okay, right now, on if I have my pencil selected, these lines are a different color. Okay, but if I were to change to, say, a pink, no, let's go to an orange, something that you'll be able to see still, and touch the paint bucket, when I touch on the lines, Fortunately, it didn't change those lines because I've already changed their colors, okay? But if I wanted to change maybe these leaves over here, I wanted them to be green. I could simply select the green, come over here and touch on the leaves. And it's just a matter of, you know, clicking and drawing your, your pencil, your stylus right across them. Okay, so lots of fun that you can do. Now then, to save this, I would go ahead and save it to memory here, just to be safe. I always like to save many times. I can go back and delete all of them when I'm finished, but I like to save a lot of times. Then go ahead and touch Next. This is where you're going to be able to change the settings of your properties. So if we choose the chain link, it's going to select everything. If we deselect the chain link, it's going to select this individual item. So then you can go down to the properties at the bottom and change the settings for just that particular item. And then you would move on to the next one. And you can just touch them and move between them. But if you want them all to be the same, touch your chain link and it will select all of the like properties. So all of those are a line stitch. So it's going to change all of the properties for all of the line stitches to be the same. If I wanted to select the fill stitches, I could select the chain link and there's the fill properties and it would change all of the fill properties to be the same. Okay, so I hope that helps you with IQ Designer. When you're finished with this, you're going to touch preview. And it's going to work through applying the stitches. Touch set. Okay. And you are ready to embroider. So hope that helps you. And so here are a few that I have played with. This one is um, Happy Harvest. And this one is from a little embroidery pattern. Whoops, too bright. Okay. So, Oh My Bloomin' Threads, just a little embroidery pattern. And turned out really super cute because how many of you are hand stitchers? Not me. Not if I can help it, because hand stitching takes way too long, and um, although it is beautiful, it takes way too long. I don't have time for all that. So, but this one's from Oh My Bloomin' Threads, Not right. and it's just called Happy Harvest. It was a very simple little pattern to do, and it's wonderful because it's, it's printed nice, nice clean images for you, so... When you take it out and look at it, and oh my blooming threads, I've used several of theirs. Theirs was actually one of the very first ones that I ever scanned with the Destiny, and it does a really great job. Here's what the pit, the design looks like, and it um, it did really well. So that was one that I played with. A, well, it was probably last summer now. So that one is just a really cute, simple one from Oh My Bloomin' Threads. You can get way more detailed. But just know the more detailed you get, the longer it may take to stitch. Okay? So that one, here we go. Now you can probably see it better. I just have to remember where the camera is now. So, oh, my blooming threads. And it turned it into this. Okay? So I'm going to go into all of the fun details about how you can actually get the lines to be a different color as well. So, it's fun details, but it's also nitpicky details, so you do have to know that. But that's why many of us bought these machines, so we could turn our hand stitches into um, embroidery stitches, okay? So this one is actually the very first one that I did. Let me turn the light a little bit. The very first one that I did, and it's called Shake, Rattle, and Snow, 
And if you were in Colorado for the Martha Pullen event just after the Destiny came out, you may recognize this because we were playing with it late one night in uh, the hotel. But again, it's from All My Bloom and Threads, and it's called Shake, Rattle, and Snow. Now, it's a big pattern. Big. I didn't do all the words to it, but it is a really big design. Really big design. Okay, so y'all should be able to read that okay. So hopefully I'm not backwards anymore. Okay, so what I did is you can actually kind of see the crease lines of the paper. So I folded it down so I could actually get it onto my paper scanning frame. Okay, and scanned in this part of the image. It's a super cute design. I love it. Okay, so I scaled, scaled my paper down so I folded it up so I could get just to the meat of the design. Um, and so when I stitched it, and I was able to go in and change all the colors, and this was just when the Destiny first came out, so no upgrades, no fancy fills, no fancy decorative stitches, just the Destiny one. So, but this is what it turned into. So if you have ever worked with palette software, and I started with palette one years and years and years ago, it's very similar to the Design Center in palette software. Okay, so you're able to break apart lines and turn them into different color lines and so forth. Okay, so this was actually one of the very first, if not the very first project I did with um, IQ Designer. So it's wonderful. Now, I can't give this design away. I can't sell this design. It is simply a sample for my classroom. And I can show you the pattern wherever it went. <laughs> I can show you the pattern, but I cannot give you the pattern because that would, of course, violate copyright laws. So if you want any of her patterns, be sure and go purchase them because they're really super cute. And now, I did get her permission to actually be able to show it, but I, I keep the pattern attached to it. Now, here's the thing. There are some designers that do not want you to turn their hand embroidery patterns into machine embroidery because they're afraid you're going to give it away or sell it or do whatever. So be sure, and if you're in question about it, you know, especially if you're a teacher who teaches classes, get permission before you do that because um, everybody's going to have to have their own, and there are some that don't want you to do that. So, But she was very gracious. She said, yes, please um, show it with a pattern, show it with a stitch out, and because what it does is it drives sales to the Destiny, and it drives sales for her patterns too. But she's got some really super cute ones, so be sure and check her out. So those are two of my favorites and one of my very first. Now this one, many of you have actually made this with me in class. And it says, be it ever so clutter, there's no place like my sewing room. And we actually used artwork and scanned it in to create these cute little designs. And these are some designs that I purchased um, for designs to go on my website. Are they done yet? No. But <laughs> I've used them in class and they stitch really well. So, but they're just super cute designs. And there's, I think, 10 of them in the set. 